It's often said that we are our memories, that web of experiences, relationships, thoughts, and feelings that make us who we are. We don't remember it all, of course. That would be impossible. Or would it? There's been a discovery in the field of memory recently, so new you won't find it in any textbook, so hard to fathom, there are some who remain unconvinced. For the moment, the scientists studying it are simply calling it superior autobiographical memory. And unless you happen to know one of the handful of people discovered so far who have it, get ready to be amazed. The story will continue in a moment. Louise Owen is 37 years old and a professional violinist living in New York City. But she has another gift, too, one that is far more rare. Let me give you a date. Let's say January 2nd, 1990. Right now I'm remembering the jogging class that I started that morning. And you're actually back there. I'm, I'm, I can feel it. I can remember the coach saying, keep going. <laughs> that was more than 20 years ago, when she was 16. A date I picked completely at random as I did this one. February 18th, 1988. 1988. Oh. <laughs> You're laughing. I'm laughing. It was a Thursday. I had a big conversation with a friend of mine, and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Louise says she can remember every day of her life since the age of 11. Try to talk us through, can you do that? How, sure. how it works. Um, out of the air. April 21st, 1991. 1991. Okay, April 21st. So in the moment between April 21st and 1991, I have scrolled through 25 April 21sts thinking, which one is it going to be? Which one is it going to be? Okay, 1991, which was a Sunday, and I was in Los Angeles, and I had a concert with the American Youth Symphony. You went to the most important thing right. that happened that, that, that day. That was the most, I mean, you probably don't want to hear about, you know, sort of the day. Oh, I got up in the morning, and I got dressed. And <laughs> you, and you remember that? Yeah. You remember right. what you had for lunch? Um, not what I had for lunch that day, but I do remember what I had for dinner the night before. <laughs> so. And effortless. It just pops right. in. I mean, for me, it's almost as automatic as if you say, what is your name and where do you live? But how do we know that what she says she remembers really happened? Enter James McGaw, a professor of neurobiology at the University of California, Irvine, and a renowned expert on memory. Dr. McGaw is the first to discover and study superior autobiographical memory, and he is quizzing Louise, his fifth subject, to find out. An eye condition requires him to wear a clouded lens. Let's move back in time now to uh, 1990. It rained on several days in January and February. Can you name the dates on which it rained? Mm. Um. <laughs> Believe it or not, she could. Let's see. It was slightly rainy and cloudy on January 14th, 15th. It was very hot the weekend of the 27th, 28th. No rain. We checked the official weather records. It rained very hard on Sunday, February 4th. And she was right. McGaw says this type of memory is completely new to science, so he and his colleagues have had to devise their own tests, like this one on public events. October 19th, 1987. It's a Monday. Uh, that was the day the big stock market crash and the cellist Jacqueline Dupre died that day. The Berlin Wall falls on what day? Uh, November 9th, 1989, which was a Thursday. Christopher Reeves' accident occurred on what day? Uh, it was Saturday, May 27th, uh, 1995. And when were the Oscars held in 1999? In 1999. Sunday, March 21st. Yes. Perfect. I went to a fabulous Oscar party that day. Because these people remember things that you and I couldn't possibly remember. And they're not memorizing, there's no trick. They can do with their memories what you and I can do about yesterday. And they can, can do it do, every day. And they can do it every day. And when I ask, what, what, goes on in, what goes on in your brain, what goes on in your mind, they give the very unsatisfying response, I just see it. It's just there. The first person ever identified with this ability is Jill Price, who says she feels haunted by the never-ending stream of memories and hasn't wanted to meet any of the others. 40 tomorrow with a chance of snow or rain. Is Next was Brad Williams, a radio news anchor and reporter from La Crosse, Wisconsin, who isn't bothered by his memory. He says it comes in handy at work and playing trivia games. I would get six, 7,000 points. Everybody else would get 1,000 points. 
third was Rick Barron from Cleveland. Do you remember every movie you've ever seen? Sure. And you remember when lots of television shows started? Anything. Movie. Six, 60 Minutes? Tuesday, September 24, 68. The first Sunday show was uh, September 19th, uh, 71. August 1st, 1974. Thursday. Why do you know that? Well, that's my most memorable August 1st. <laughs> Why? And Bob Petrella. <laughs> I moved to L.A. that year. A TV producer and writer who serves as the collective memory and sometimes the evening entertainment for his friends. 1996, April 27th which was a Saturday. Thanks. It was a Tuesday. No, April 27th, 96. Oh, no, Shark, right. no, oh, I'm in 93. Same. It was a Saturday. Everybody right. else is, can't remember anything He's as they get older. I have an almanac and I'm He's wrong. not wrong. I must confess that when I first heard about this research, what surprised me was not that this condition existed, but that it was considered so rare. That's because it sounded like a description of a friend of mine, the actress Mary Lou Henner, a star of the hit TV show Taxi. She lives with her husband and two sons from a prior marriage in Los Angeles. Hey, Mom, what day was Valentine's Day in 79? In 1979? Um, it was a Wednesday. And you're right. How do you... <laughs> you know, you've lived with me your entire yeah, life. I've never explained how you do that. I don't do it. I just see it. You and I have known each other <laughs> 25 years. I can rattle off almost every single time I've seen you. Uh, do you remember when we went to Oriole, the restaurant? That was 93. Oh my gosh. That was oh June 1st, the Tuesday. And what did we eat? I had the salmon. because She I even remembers what day she first wore many of the shoes in her large and well-organized closet. Like these shoes, I wore them October, the, the first time I wore them October 18th, 2007. These I wore on uh, April the 21st of this year, so that was a Tuesday. Um, oh, these shoes I got a long time ago. It sure seemed like superior autobiographical memory to me. 1982, I got them on April the 9th, so that was a Friday of 1982. We put Mary Lou in touch with Dr. McGaw. Hi, so nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Jim. To have her memory officially put to the test. There was a session in his office. You know when John Lennon was killed? Yes, that was December 8th, 1980, and that was a Monday. A round of standard memory tests. Go ahead and Go put ahead them and in the it. order that they were presented to you. The public events quiz. Delta Airline Flight 191 crashes near Dallas, Texas. Oh, I know exactly when that happened because all of a sudden I was at my, uh, it was August the 2nd of 1985, it was a Friday. After seven hours of grilling. October 1st, 8th, 15th, 22nd. McGaw and, and his collaborator, neuroscientist Larry Cahill, officially anointed Mary Lou Henner, superior autobiographical memory subject number six. Extremely impressive. You really do remember your whole life. It's like putting in a DVD and it cues up to a certain place. I'm there again. So I'm looking out from my eyes and seeing things visually as I would have that day. Do you remember all your old boyfriend's birthdays? I'll bet oh, you yeah. do. Not only that, the date of the first time, you know, it's like, no, I remember <laughs> in yeah. order. Let's have another warm Miami welcome for Mary Lou Henner. We searched for footage of long ago events in Mary Lou's life to try and stump her. October 26th, 1976. Okay, October 26th, 1976. 1976 was a Tuesday. Oh, I went to uh, I went to shoot a ring around the collar commercial in Venice, Italy, <laughs> and you saw a second and a half mood shot of Venice, and then a gondolier singing "Of Love I Sing, Tra La La La," for you got ring around the collar, -la, and I went. My powder didn't work. <laughs> of Love I Sing, La 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 La. More than thirty for years you later. Around the -la -la. My powder didn't work. Dead on. Boy, you guys really have <laughs> drawn up the dregs. What do you see as the potential in terms of science? It could be a new chapter. We think we knew a lot, and all of a sudden these people come and display a, a kind of memory we've never seen before, and we have to say, woo, what is that about? And so we're going to take a look and see if we can figure that out. And it could be, could be very important. I'm so excited to meet you guys. One thing Dr. McGaw had not yet done is bring these memory wizards together. So we did, and he kicked off a questioning session unlike any other. A 7.1 earthquake hit 
it's the San Francisco, Oakland area uh, on October 17, 17, 17 1989. Tuesday. What, what I mean, we were watching the game Tuesday. of the World Tuesday. Series. Tuesday. 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 Oh my gosh. Right. Are you guys oh, feeling terrible. a little competitive with each other? <laughs> no. Well, no. I want to make sure that I'm like, not the dunce here. Brad. No, I know. I, I got to keep up. When they tell you they know, are they always correct? I would say over 99% of the time, if not 100% of the time. If they tell you something and you can check it, they're right. I've almost given up looking now. Uh, because, so okay, weird. they're right. People go, okay, what's the trick? Yeah, exactly. Or what's the, yeah. That's what you get a lot. They seem to relish the chance, finally, to compare notes. Do you guys <laughs> ever get ticked at someone? It's, it's something that you consider monumental, and for them it's monumental, and then you bring it up and they go, well, I don't remember that. <laughs> like, exactly. How can you forget that? Right. You know what I love? I love when people get so flattered. Like, they go, wow, I must have really made an impression on you. And I go, no, no, no. Does it ever freak anybody out? People misunderstand it a lot of times. They think it's photographic. They think it's autistic. Yeah. You know, they call you Rain Man. <laughs> right. And I'll just go along with that. Yeah, yeah, definitely Friday. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. It was a question we had. Are they autistic? Are they anything like savants? Well, I guess the answer is yes and no. They're not people who have an extraordinary ability but can't tie their shoe. And, and that's part of what I think makes this at least so interesting for me, is that you have this really remarkable ability in a person who other, is otherwise pretty darn normal. But what exactly does normal mean when you remember every day of your life, when everything good and everything bad that's ever happened to you is right there, instantly accessible? When you look back at painful memories, is it just as raw? Sometimes it'll be as though it happened yesterday. Sometimes it's as though it happened last week. Just the mention of a sad day, like the one in 1986, when Louise learned she'd have to change schools, and she relives it emotionally. I felt like my whole world was collapsing. And you say that, and it's like, all of a sudden, I feel like this really heartbroken little 13-year-old all over again. You feel but it. I do feel it. Vivid. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. Is your heart... I, I mean, my, my heart is actually pounding right now. <laughs> Tell me telling this. Me. She yeah. says her memory is a I gift, think. but there are definitely downsides. Sometimes having this sort of extreme memory can be a very isolating sort of thing. There are times when I feel like I'm fluent in a language that nobody else speaks, or that I'm walking around and everybody else has amnesia. Are there still skeptics in your field who know what you're up to and just... Yes. Science is based on skepticism. And so, yes, there are skeptics. I suppose if I had not met these people and tested them, I would be a skeptic. My answer to that is, come on over for a day, I'll let you meet a few of them. And I'd like to see how many of them walk away and say, well, it's not a big deal. No, it is a big deal, and we need to figure out what it's all about. And that work is already underway. Dr. McGaw is doing MRI scans of all the subjects, searching for clues that might be hidden in the structure of their brains. You all right there? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Preliminary results from the MRIs are in, and the findings are tantalizing and unexpected. We'll tell you about that and what this kind of memory has meant for their relationships when we come back.